Good morning and a very warm welcome to everybody here at St. Peter's and those at home watching online. Uh, my name is Chris Clayson, I'm the curate here at St. Peter's uh, and I've just got a couple of notices before Hannah leads us in our time of worship. The first notice is quite an important one. It is just to let you all know that because of the recent PM's announcement about COVID and restrictions continuing, we will not be re uh, returning back to a full schedule of services next month. So we won't be going back to full five services. We'll continue as we are. There might be one or two changes, uh, but we will inform you and let you all know once we've had our PCC meeting to decide how we reopen the church and, and the new schedule. So apologies, we absolutely wanted to open up as, as, as much as we could, but we're just not able to do that at the moment. Um, so we will keep you informed. Um, secondly, uh, a big thank you to uh, the St. Peter's Walkers, I have now classed them as. Uh, they went out walking yesterday from a range of three miles to 17 miles, I believe, was the uh, longest person, uh, the longest walk, uh, and they did it to raise money for the for St Peter's Church. And if you want to donate to that, either with your legs next time or with uh, money this time, you can do that by looking for the yellow envelopes at the front. But they do have a specific sticker on the back for the parish walk, um, so they're at the, the desk there and at the back. I will now hand over to. Hannah, who will lead us in our time of worship. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, 
and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, that for thou, God, which confess their faults, restore thou them unto our penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereof live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> o Lord, open thou our lips, and our hearts shall show forth thy grace. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make grace to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O Lord, let us say unto the Lord, let us not rejoice. Let us go. 
remain standing for Psalm number 48 to be sung by the choir. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Great is the Lord. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Job, chapter 38, verses 1 to 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you? when I laid the foundation of the earth. Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds, clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. 
Here ends the Old Testament lesson.
Testament lesson is taken from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the cloud behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. <clears throat> he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here ends the New Testament lesson. believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. you 
thy ministers with righteousness. And may thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is no beseech thee mercifully to hear us, and grant that we, to whom thou hast given an earth hearty desire to pray, may by thy mighty aid be defended and comforted in all dangers and adversities, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, <coughs> Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The anthem this morning, I Love All Beauteous Things by Judith Weir.
us pray. Lord, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind and spirit. Through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers, open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. Lord, help us to build on the values of your eternity. May your kingdom grow all over the world. May it touch hearts in the crowded streets of cities and in scattered rural communities. May people be drawn to you through us as our actions are living testimony of your love and generosity. May your power draw people near. Lord, we pray for those in positions of power and responsibility. We pray for wisdom for the government and their advisers in taking us forward out of lockdown. We pray for all those who are working so hard to suppress what looks like a third wave of COVID infections. We thank you, Lord, for all the volunteers, doctors, nurses, administrative staff working in the vaccine program and we pray for NHS staff who worked tirelessly over the last 16 months to keep us safe. May we all do our part in keeping infections low, acting responsibly. Lord, we pray for those who are persecuted, starved to death, cast aside and dehumanized. We pray for the people of Tigray in northern Ethiopia where two million people have been displaced from their homes and where over 350,000 are suffering catastrophic famine conditions. We pray for the people of Yemen, the Rohingya people who fled from Myanmar because of ethnic cleansing, and for the people in Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq, whose communities are plagued by sectarian violence and terrorism. We pray for all who find themselves in places where there is pain, sadness, no hope. This week, the UN Global Trends Report estimates that the number of people fleeing wars and violence and human rights abuse in 2020 rose to nearly 82.4 million people. May we be generous in our prayers and in our lives, and in our lives represent and practice Jesus' love for those who suffer and need help. Lord, we thank you for the work of Compassion UK. We thank you for those who sponsor and care for a child in Rwanda. Through the joint support with partner churches, children can be educated and given a future. Lord, we pray for all those who are ill in body and mind. Give them peace and the knowledge that you are present in their pain and suffering. And we pray especially for those on our prayer sheet. Lord, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of a loved one. For members of our families who've died and whose anniversary we recall. We give you thanks for lives well lived and for happy memories. Let us say grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us stand to join with the choir as they sing and we join in our hearts the hymn as pants a heart for cooling streams.
Please be seated. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, divinely human. I want to explore that statement. What's behind Jesus Christ, divinely human? Well, in today's Gospel reading, we experience both sides of Jesus. We experience the human and the divine, the fragile and the powerful. The first verse clearly states that this is at the end of the day. Verse 35, the day when evening came. So what kind of day has Jesus had? Has he been relaxing with the disciples, having a picnic? Not really. It's probably one of the most intense days that you could ever imagine. And we actually need to go all the way back to chapter 3 to see the start of this day. The reading today was chapter 4, verse 35, right in the middle. So there's a whole chapter and a half before we even get to our part. It starts off with Jesus heals on the Sabbath. He's in the synagogue arguing with the Jewish leaders and healing. He then moves on and the crowds follow him. And he's teaching and he's healing to the point where he needs to go into a boat onto the lake. He then goes up the side of a mountain and appoints 12 disciples. After that, he then travels back into town, goes to somebody's house, and is accused by his family and the teachers of the law that he's working for the devil. And he has this big theological argument with them, again, while he's teaching, while he's healing. And then he continues to move away from the house, back to the lake, and we get these great parables, the parable of the sower, the lamp on the stand, the parable of the growing seed, the parable of the mustard seed, which Hannah preached last week. And then we finally, after this extraordinarily busy day, come to this part of the story at the end. Now just imagine doing all that walking, all that up and down mountains, back into town, back onto a lake, back again, no rest, all that physical and mental energy that Jesus has exerted. I wonder, how would you feel after a day like that? I can only speak for myself and I know I would be absolutely exhausted. And so was Jesus. It says in verse 38, Jesus was in the stern, asleep. And now, this is such a simple line of text. Jesus was asleep in the stern. But actually, it's powerful. It resonates with each one of us. If we'd had a day like that, we would be asleep in the boat as well. It shows us that Jesus is human. He's just like each one of us. A person who needs to rest, who can become worn out by all the daily activities, to the point that a storm doesn't even wake him up. He's that tired. He's exhausted. And I certainly can relate to that at the moment with Alan being on research leave. Yes, my days are extremely long at the moment, and when my head hits the pillow, I'm out like a light. It's absolutely shattering. But there is something comforting in knowing that Jesus doesn't just understand on an intellectual level our lives. Jesus lived a fully human life, felt exhausted, felt tired, felt grief and pain. He was fully human. But Jesus was not just fully human, he was also fully divine. He was divinely human. What happens when the storm hits the boat? Well, all these experienced fishermen who've been out on the lake all their lives are terrified. The waves are tossing them around, hitting the boat. They don't know what's, when it's going to hit next because it's in the middle of the night. It's dark. They can't see what's happening around them. So what do they do? They wake up this exhausted Jesus who's asleep at the back and they cry out to him. And this is where we see the divine. Here now, we see Christ's divine nature. With one sentence, he displays his almighty authority and power. With one sentence, he calms these elemental forces. With one sentence, he shows us that he is fully divine. Jesus, divinely human. Has anybody ever tried to control the weather here? 
I've certainly tried to, where I've got a barbecue and the rain clouds start coming over. It never works. I don't seem to have the same powers as Jesus, which would be nice to be able to control the weather, but I can't do that. But why is it important that we recognise and remember that Jesus was fully human and fully divine? Why does it make a difference to the story? It makes a difference because if Jesus is only divine or only human, then everything falls apart. Our salvation doesn't work. It's not realised. Now, the 19th century Danish theologian uh, Soren Kierkegaard offers a parable to clarify why God had to become fully human. A king fell in love with a humble maiden. He considered how he might woo her. If he were to court her with the trappings of majesty, she might love him for the wrong reason. Yet, if he were to dress up as a person of her, her own class, her love, if it came, would be founded on deceit. Thus, he must become a person of her own class if he was genuine in his desire to win her heart. The king had to become, not just pretend. This story stresses that Jesus embodies God's unwavering and unearned love for the human race. This was not a stunt. It wasn't a deceit. It was an eternal and costly gesture of grace. God loves each one of us so much he became one of us. In other words, unless God took on himself the whole of human nature at the incarnation, then the whole of the human nature is not healed. If part of what it means to be human is left out of Jesus, then that part is not put right with God. If Jesus was not fully human, then our humanity is still cut off from God. So we believe that he was fully human. But if Jesus was only human, that would not be enough to bridge the gap between us and God. It's only if Jesus was also fully divine at the same time that our path to redemption and salvation would be available. However hard we try as humans, we are never good enough to participate in the divine nature of God, which is what he wants, what he longs for. He wants us to be part of that. If Jesus was only human, it would still not be enough to reconcile us with God. Only a divinely human Jesus Christ, fully human, fully divine, can bridge that gap and bring us before our Heavenly Father, bring us that eternal dance with our Creator. If we don't believe in a divinely human Jesus Christ, then we have no access to the Father, no peace with God. There's no revelation through Jesus Christ. We have no gospel doesn't make sense it doesn't work but when we do believe that Jesus was fully human and fully divine then the gospel brings life we are in relationship with our father in heaven we have peace with God Jesus demonstrates the passion that God has for his creation by coming down and sacrificing himself for each one of us we are saved by the grace of God so please, as you read the story, this, para, this story of the count of the storm, remember the human exhausted Jesus and the divine powerful Jesus, one and the same, Jesus Christ, divinely human. Amen. We stand for our final hymn, again sung by the choir but joined in our heart by us, immortal, invisible, God only wise. <laughs>
weak say, I am strong, and the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 